Welcome to Under the Spotlight. I'm Carmela, and this big smile today is just for you because when you meet my guest today, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so inspired. I can't believe what I heard today. This is amazing. And it may inspire you to do something that will land you here under the spotlight. That would be amazing. So I just want to say a very big thank you to everyone who's been subscribing to the YouTube channel where you get to see all the amazing guests that we've had on the show as we're now in season three. And to everyone that is signing up for the VIP audience on CarmelaSterling.com. Thank you so much. Uh, we send out weekly information to keep you informed and you get some extra special uh, ahead of time information about our special guests. And to our sponsor, we have a nootropics beverage. It's actually coffee. Oh, my love of coffee. Cheers. It's delicious. Comes in a container. You sprinkle it into your existing coffee or drink it as your coffee. It's actually coffee loaded with nootropics, which elevates the body's happy hormones, which means you're happy beyond belief. Who doesn't need that? And clarity and patience. It's the patient's drink, which we definitely need for this topic today. I met this woman through Podmatch, which is a site where you can connect with people who are like minds. And uh, we uh, actually ended up on the phone with this new friend of mine, Vicki Rubin. And if you uh, did, did she leave us for a second? She'll oh, pop yeah, back in. Right here. Yep. So we talk on the phone for a couple of minutes. It's a new friend. You know how it takes time to kind of get to know someone. This was like an instant. We knew each other. We knew each other. We had common ground. And I just I just felt so excited. Like our audience has to meet this woman. She is an award winning author. Her book is Raising Jess. I loved every page of it and had to put it down multiple times to wipe my tears. A uh, well-known advocate and champion for others. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in a warm welcome to my guest, Vicki Rubin. So we're inspired by the visits of our guest on Spotlight. And I want to just toss to you and let you go with this because you, you've learned a lot. You share a lot, not only in your book, which everyone should buy, not only because um, oh, I saw the the author. I met the author. We're all inspired by what you wrote because of this piece that I keep leaning on, the pivot of life, big career into now mom of, of a child with really needs, special needs. And you pivoted so beautifully. You've inspired me. Oh, thank you. I, I just felt, you know, when you find out your child has special needs and has a disability, of course, immediately you think of all the things that can go wrong. And, and that's normal. The pivoting is, is what is, was so helpful to us and our family to look at Jessica. This is our Jess. And, and Jess, we're not going to compare her to other children. We can't compare her to other children. She's, she's our Jess. And instead of thinking of all the things that are different for us, it, we thought, it's okay that things are different. It's not that things are bad. Things are just different. And, and difference is okay. So we, we as a family made a decision. We're going to do everything everyone else does, but it's going to take a lot longer. And we, we went on and we had two other children. And our other two children, we participated in all the sports. My husband was, you know, little league coach. We did soccer and we did all that. But our children knew we were all going to get there. But, you know, taking Jessica was not going to be like taking any other child in the car. There was equipment. There was, you know, worrying about certain foods and does she going to have a seizure? So there was always different things to think about, but it didn't stop us from doing things. And I think that was uh, key to our survival. Do you think typically it stops people from doing the norm? Our world's become very small. Oh my gosh, I don't want to be out and about. He's going to have a seizure. She's going to need special food or you just, you just went for it. Only with flying. I didn't go for it. I, I was always very, uh, very nervous to take Jessica on a plane after she was five years old because the seizures always gave me angst. And I thought sitting on a plane, if she would have a seizure, I, I'm a horrible flyer. I couldn't even imagine having that added to it. Everything else, you know what? If we're going to a restaurant and I would bring our own food or if we're going to uh, any place that we weren't sure if it was accessible, first we would call first to see is it accessible. And if not, we'd say, okay, there's four of us here. We're just going to push the wheelchair through. And 
my my youngest daughter who's 36 <laughs> my baby who's 36 right now uh, when i interviewed her for the book she did say that was one of the things that resonated with her that the not giving up and the just keeping pushing through and staying together and just mm -hmm. and just you know having a a, a family life but I love that because it doesn't always go that way. Siblings are traumatized. You know, they had to give up this or that. But when you think about long ago, you know, there I, I recently read a book about and this was really long ago where the family member didn't know they had a sibling because within a few years, the sibling was living in a residential and then they didn't talk about the sibling. And, and, you know, I talk a lot, I talked a lot to the grandparents because I mean, my dad's 92, when he was growing up, people didn't raise children with significant needs at home. And so there's been such a shift from, from that, you know, how that was to Jessica was fully included through middle school. So, you know, the embracing and the acceptance has really changed over time. And I think it's, I think the supports family have make it a bit easier to just push forward and 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 try to do whatever you can. How do you, what do you see in the other children? They've they've learned a lot from Jess and how you you raised all of them together. I mean, your love is powerful, and your husband he deserves a lot of credit. You guys kept together as as a family. Any tips? there on making the uh, helping yeah. the siblings there's pj yeah. now hey pj hi pj <laughs> he's saying hi um like things like that like we can't just you know shut them off and say you know we'll be back in a little while i mean we have to be with them all the time and sometimes siblings might feel oh my gosh it's all about pj it's all about the the, the person who has these significant needs as you you mentioned but your children took that differently and and that's really hard because Jessica did need more attention and she needed more stuff. And I remember at one point, my son Alex said, you know, well, why can't I do this because Jessica's doing this or Carly's doing this? And I said, you know what? Do you really want me to treat you all the same? Because if you really want me to treat you all the same, then I'm going to do for you what I do for Jessica. I don't think you want that. And it, I think it made an impact everyone everyone has different needs. And so my youngest daughter, as I said, she always felt like an adult, even as a young kid, because she started doing things for herself and she started helping with Jessica. And then Alex also, they, they developed some sense of independence that maybe they wouldn't have developed right away. So I think, I, I think that's, a positive thing. I, I also feel I, I wrote in the book about a um, we had a blizzard. We're in Buffalo. Of course, we've had, had a blizzard. And Jessica came home and Mitch and I weren't home for three hours. And the two middle schoolers had to take Jessica off the bus, had to give her her medicine, had to change her briefs, had to make sure she ate. And so there are responsibilities that they had that other children didn't have. I admire you from one woman to another and from one mom to another. I'm sure the women are feeling this too, that you, you raise children who have a greater sense of understanding, responsibility and love, right? Because of their, their sister. I, you have I a lot. Of I just, I don't know if you notice this, but a lot of the people who are in the field, therapists, direct service personnel, in the human service field, if you ask them, so many of them have had a sibling with a disability. And so they've been touched in a way that they want to give and help others. And I always think those people are like angels on the planet. I'm like, I didn't get to choose. He's mine. I have to care for him, but they get to choose. They're like, and they, they want to be in the field of helping people with special, special or significant needs. When did you start using that term significant needs? I've never heard anyone reference like that. Do you consider her diagnosed uh, other than special needs? No, she does have special needs. You know, the, the, uh, the language changes all the time. And I used to use the word severe disabilities. And then someone once said to me, 
you know, that was harsh. So then I changed it to significant needs, you, you know, and then eventually significant needs is going to be really, I can't believe you're saying significant needs and then I'll change it again. But oh it, boy, yeah, we're always, uh, you know, throughout the years, all the, all the language has changed and many of it has been a, a very positive mood move. Awesome. But, you have yeah. had impact as an advocate for your daughter. You you share what you've learned and you've touched down in so many realms on this planet. One of my, fa if not my favorite picture of Jess is at her bat mitzvah. You actually figure it out a way. I'll, I'll just hold up. You figure it out a way how she could have her bat mitzvah. And I thought, oh my gosh, because I've been to a bat mitzvah and you can, you, you can see the time and it takes like a year to, to, to get prepared. I'm thinking, how is this girl going to do this as I'm reading your book? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you find a way. You always find a way. We did with it was actually our, our rabbi first suggested it to us. And we thought. Is this going to be like a show? You know, I, we really wanted it. We were intrigued, but we wanted to make it meaningful. We just didn't want it to be, oh, everyone's getting a bat mitzvah. Let Jessica have a bat mitzvah. Right. And Jessica loves music. And the bat mitzvah was done all through music. And I'll, I'll just give a quick story. Yeah, Jessica uh, used a computer for some uh, voice output. And the school and the family and the temple worked together for her to learn a prayer in Hebrew. It was, it's called the Shema. It's one of the most important prayers. And when she was up, and we called it the Bima, but up on the stage, and it was time for her to say the Shema, she isolated her index finger. She pointed. The prayer was said. And so... It was the school that worked on this, the temple, the family. And then, of course, everyone applauded, which you're not really supposed to do. And then she kept doing it again and again and again. <laughs> but, but it was it was such a moving ceremony. And her brother and sister, her brother wrote a song for her. Her sister played the violin. It was oh. it was a real community event. And um, it was not it's something that we ever thought would happen. We, we find a way. There are certain things that absolutely should happen and be commemorated, ceremonial, ceremonial, um, any kind of regalia. I mean, that, that should happen, whether it's birthday or we're talking about a very special event here, uh, her bar mitzvah. So we're finding more and more people are open to the idea of helping make something like that happen. That's changed. And I'm, I'm not sure what span of time in, in your timeline, you realize that more people are more aware of people with special needs and then they they give a little more respect or help or have you seen that change in your timeline raising jess absolutely and i think it stems for a lot from inclusion in school because the children when when i'm not going to categorize anybody's age but when i was going to school people with special needs if, if they were even in the school it was a different wing you just, there was no interact no interaction but as law, federal laws changed and time changed and the value of inclusion, the value for not only the individual with special needs, but also the typical students to learn, hey, everybody's different, but everybody has something to share. Everybody has, everyone can learn from anybody. And so I think the, the typical students who don't receive services grew up with um, individuals receiving services. And so there was this sense of, of um, understanding and empathy that hopefully will continue while, as they're adults. And that's why I think some of it has changed. Some of it has changed because of school. I love that you bring that up because we have people in our life that were once upon a time helpers in the special need. Um, yes, thank you. In the special need room. So PJ had a room with his, you know, other kids who were in there because they had special needs. It was what's the, the, the home room. And yeah. then they would go out and about. But there were young people who would come in from, uh, you know, their grade and help out in the special needs classroom. And just to your point, those people now have um, learned so much from working with people with special needs that they end up in the in the community as teachers, aides, PCAs, and so forth. And I, I love 
those angels on the planet. Our producers uh, commenting about your awards on this book that I just love and keep holding up. I can't even believe all these awards you've won for this. How's that feel? And, and kind of give us an overview. Congratulations. It's amazing. Thank you. The, the reader's favorite, and I, I won a gold medal, and my husband and I were on, a, uh, on our RV trip, and you know we're out to lunch, and of course, I'm scrolling on my phone, and I get this email, and I, I'm not believing it, and <laughs> I'm like, it says I won a gold medal. It was just, what? <laughs> Um, and so the, my husband doesn't like to fly and neither do I, but he really won't fly. It was, the ceremony was in Miami and, um, it was during the Miami book fest. And so my daughter, uh, Carly, my youngest daughter flew down with me and my dad, who at the time was 91, now he's 92, he came. And so he got to see me walk on the stage and win an award. And that to me, uh, I only wish my mom would have been able to. To, to see that also, because she really wanted me to write a book. All, all my life, she wanted me to write a book. So, but that was really amazing that my dad was, and my daughter was able to see that. And then the other uh, two awards, Best Book Awards and Book Ex Excellence Awards, um, I won as a, the, the medal as finalist for a memoir. And one of them was for an inspiring memoir and one is just in the memoir category. <laughs> thank you. Oh my gosh, thank a million you. applause. Congratulations. <laughs> I, I just have the chills for you. You are. Thank you. That was awesome. not expected. Believe right? Me. Yeah, that was like, whoa, bonus. <laughs> I'm glad your mom kept on you about that. And um, I'm sure she'd be incredibly, incredibly proud. It's it's an overwhelming sensation. I can only imagine having this book uh, complete. What are your hopes for people who decide, okay, I want to read that? I wonder what that's about. What are your. What are you hoping for, wishing for? I, I have a few wishes. One of okay. them is that they can't put it down. <laughs> Another one is that they share it, share it with somebody. And it's not only for families of, of uh, who have family members with a disability, because we're all around people with disability. And just to see the parent perspective, it's also important. I always, my career, I worked in a hospital and physicians and nurses and, and all medical professional to see the parent perspective. I, I know there's the medical perspective, but to see the value of the parent perspective who's with their child 24 seven and may not have technical words for what's going on with their child, but they have the skills and the knowledge. And it's, they're such a valuable resource. And so it, it, this book really is for, for anybody who just wants a story of hope or, you know, family life or, and a few laughs that try, try, try to write it funny. <laughs> you did. You definitely did. And I was glad because a couple of times I was like, oh my gosh, where's the tissues? And then pick it back up again. <laughs> and you made me smile. Just makes me smile. I, just, Aww. just looking at her and seeing her accomplishments and you and your parenting skills and uh, send regards to your husband. I'm, I'm excited to to meet you both in person someday and maybe oh, talk yeah. about his innovations. He's come up with some cool ideas. Vicki's also a blogger and of course has a website, which we want to send you to. So VickiRubin.com. Uh, do you blog about Jess or other? Often, or often about Jess. I've, I've had some um, uh, published articles also, but I also blog about um, our RV and our traveling. And those are usually humorous because if anyone knew me <laughs> when I was growing up, sitting in an RV was not something they would have ever predicted for me. So, <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> another, another pointing to accepting the change and pivoting. <laughs> we just okay. never know. <laughs> you never know for sure. Right. Well, that helpful message of yours just as loud and clear. Thank you, Vicki Rubin, for your time, for taking the time to visit with our audience. And we appreciate you and really love you. Just uh, love to Jess from all of us here. Oh, Thanks for being here. Carmela, thank you. And thank your producer so much. And I just love talking with you. Thank you. If you would stay on as uh, you, you leave on camera, I just want to say a few words to the audience. So, and Peter wants to, to visit with you for a minute. Thank you, Vicki. Love you. <laughs> thank you. Special, inspiring. Buy it read it, devour it, enjoy the pictures. You have a perfect life. You'll say, ah, oh, inspiring for someone who maybe had to pivot a little bit more than 
you have, it makes us feel grateful. Something about the way she wrote this, I can't put words on. You'll see it and experience it when you read it. Raising Jess, award-winning memoir. Well, that's under the spotlight today. And this season uh, three is just a great beginning uh, to many more wonderful guests. I know you want to maybe listen again, or you want to see what else is going on. YouTube for sure. And of course, don't forget CarmelaSterling.com. We can direct can directly connect you there to all of the podcasts. Love to hear your take on today and what your aha moment was. And really appreciate you all tuning in and listening in. I'm Carmela, and I'll see you next time under the spotlight.